Hi, I'm Tom, one of the senior developer advocates here at Grafana Labs, and in today's video, we'll be diving deep into instrumenting a React web application with Grafana Faro, our tool for front-end observability. We'll explore how Grafana Faro helps you visualize crucial information such as application performance, errors, logs, and user activity through real user monitoring. Before we start integrating Grafana Faro, let's discuss why observing your web application is essential. Observability helps you understand not just what your application is doing, but why it's behaving in certain ways. For developers, this insight is crucial for optimizing performance and enhancing user experience. One key component of front-end observability is real user monitoring, or RUM. RUM tracks and analyzes how real users interact with your application. It captures data like page load times and user interactions, helping you tailor your app to meet real-world usage scenarios effectively. Another critical aspect is understanding web vitals. These metrics are what Google considers important for a good user experience on the web. They include largest contentful paint, which measures loading performance, first input delay, which measures interactivity, and cumulative layout shift, which measures visual stability within your application. By monitoring these metrics, you can proactively spot issues that might not surface in a development environment, but significantly impact user experience in production. This is where Grafana Faro comes into play. Grafana Faro provides an integrated suite of tools designed specifically for front-end applications. It allows you to capture, analyze, and visualize key performance indicators, errors, and usage patterns in real time. Faro comes packed with pre-configured dashboards that automatically display these metrics, streamlining your monitoring setup and enabling you to focus on optimizing your application based on actual user data. Faro also includes features for tracking user journeys and behaviors, giving you deeper insight into how users interact with your application and where they encounter issues. So with that said, let's take a look at how we can instrument a React application using the Faro React SDK, and then use Grafana Cloud's front-end observability to monitor our application's performance. Okay, so you can see here that I have a React application up and running. This React application is hitting a third-party API that I have running in the cloud. That API is then connecting to the Steam Store API to return all of the featured games currently on the store. We can add any of these games to our favorites and then head on over to the favorites page where we can see any games that we've already added to our favorites. We can remove them here and then we can also head over to the search section to search for any games within the Steam Store. However, you'll see that if I search for a game here, we're going to run into some runtime issues. This is going to be indicative of what a user may experience within your application when it's running in production. Now here, I can obviously see the error myself. However, when a user is using your web application in production, you won't necessarily be able to see them running into these issues directly. So we're going to need a way to visualize these within our Grafana dashboard. So what I want to do is I want to instrument this web application so that we can start gathering some information about things such as page load times, time to first byte, see any logs that are being generated, and in particular, like I mentioned, see any errors that users may be encountering with our web application. So to do that, I'm gonna come over to my Grafana Cloud instance here. And then on the left-hand side, I've clicked into the front end apps section. You can see here that I'm now in the Grafana Faro or front end observability as it's known in Grafana Cloud section of my Grafana Cloud instance. I'm gonna create a new application here. I'm gonna give it a name of Folly Demo, so front end observability demo. Below that, we have this cause allowed origin section. This is gonna allow us to determine what URLs are allowed to push data into our Grafana Faro collector. Now, since my application is running locally on my machine, it's running at localhost port 3000. So I'm gonna enter localhost port 3000, and I'm gonna make sure to add the HTTP protocol to the front of this. Below that, we have this default attributes section. This is gonna allow us to add metadata to any logs, events, and errors that go into our Grafana Faro collector by default, which means that we don't have to manually add these to anything that we're pushing from our application. 
This allows us to save bandwidth, and it means that we can add things that will always be present. So for example, here I'm going to add an application name parameter, and it's always going to have a value of Steam Store front end so that we can search for that within the logs. Below that, I'm going to acknowledge that this is going to incur some costs to create, and then I'm going to press the Create button. We've now been taken to the front end observability application that's specifically been created for our Folly demo. And we've gone to the Web SDK configuration tab by default. This is going to tell us how to instrument our application by adding some code to the start. Here, I'm going to copy this code block and we're going to make some changes to this. You'll note that this is importing from a Faro Web SDK package. However, my application is running as a React application rather than a standard JavaScript application. So there's specifically a package for Grafana Faro when you're using React. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So we'll copy this and we'll head over to our application's code. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the packages that we need via npm. So let's stop the application from running and I'll run npm install. And we're going to install the Grafana Faro React package instead of the Faro Web SDK. And then I'm going to install the Grafana Faro Web Tracing package. With those two packages installed, let's paste in the initialization code that we copied before. I'm going to make a few changes here. So you'll see that again, this is importing from the Faro Web SDK package. I'm going to change this so it imports from the Faro React package. I'm going to remove the Faro variable here because we're never going to use that. And then down here below, what I want to do is I want to instrument our React router so that we can start seeing page load information errors in the context of our individual routes. So for example, our home, favorite, search, and so on. To do that, I'm going to import a few things from React Router DOM up here. And then I'm also going to import a couple of extra things from this Faro React package. So I'm going to import the React integration and the React Router version. Then down here where we have our instrumentation section of our Faro initialization, I'm going to add a new instrumentation here. This is going to be our React integration. You can see here that I've got a router property. I'm specifying the version as React Router version version 6. And then I'm passing in all of those dependencies that I imported previously. You can find all the documentation for how this React integration works on the Grafana Faro documentation. I'll leave a link to that in the description below. But for now, let's save this page. And we're going to have to make one small change in our app.js file. And this is where our roots live. Instead of using the roots component from React Router, we're actually going to use a Faro roots component. So let's remove the import for the roots object here. And then let's import our Faro roots component from our Faro React package. And then let's save that. We'll run the application again with npm start. And now what I want to do is I want to click around in our application a few times just to try and start generating some data here. So let's refresh this page a few times. We'll head on over to our favorites section. Let's perhaps remove a couple of favorites here. We'll go back and add a couple of things to our favorites. And then finally, we'll perform a couple of searches here. So let's search for Final Fantasy. Again, we're going to get that error message. So let's go back to our search page and let's search for Broken Sword here again. We're getting that error message. And now what I want to do is I want to head back into our overview tab on our front end observability section of Grafana Cloud. On the right hand side here, I'm going to change this drop down to be every five seconds. We want to auto refresh this site. And then we'll start seeing, once we refresh this page, some information being sent to our Grafana Faro instance and being visualized here on this dashboard. So you can see that already we're getting seven page loads. We've got all of our web vitals information here up top, such as time to first byte, first contentful paint, largest contentful paint, cumulative layout shift, first input delay, and interaction to next paint. We then also have an indication of how many errors have been encountered on our application. Below that, we have our page loads and errors in real time. And you can see here that we have our page loads and then errors here are displayed in red. 
Below that we have our page performance section. Now this is split out by root because we integrated that React integration for our React router. We're getting all of the information split out by, for example, our favorite section, our search page, and our root page here. And then below that we have three panels here, which are 75th percentile indicators for things such as page load, cumulative layout shift, and input response time. This is gonna give you a broad strokes overview of what the vast majority of users are experiencing with your application. Now, with all of this information, the first thing I want to immediately draw my attention to is this two errors here up at the top. I wanna to figure out what's happening within my application, what errors the users are experiencing, and then figure out if I can fix it. So at the top here, where we have our tabs, let's click into the errors tab. And you can see here that we get this page load and errors timeline again, but we also get this top errors section and top page routes by error count. And this immediately indicates to me that we've got a 404 request failing, and we also can see that it's on the search page. So let's click into this error here, and you can see that we get the full stack trace for this error. It's an Axios error, and it's request failed with status 404, and we can see that it's happened on the search page. So let's come back into our overview dashboard here, and we know that it's on our search page, and we know that it's a 404. So immediately I could go into my code and I could make sure that the URL I'm using is correct. But there's one other thing I can do here as well. And let's head into our search section here for our search page. And we can see all of the user sessions that have happened or are currently happening within our application. Let's click on the session ID here to be taken into the session details. And this is all of the information about this particular user's journey throughout our application. You can see here that we can see all of the events and measurements that are being gathered and collected from that user. And then inside the activity section, I'm gonna to toggle over to the traces section here. This is gonna show me all of the traces within the application. So you can see that I've got a bunch of get requests going out to third party applications here. Let's click through some of these and see what's going on. So in the first one, you can see I've got a 200 OK get request here for a featured endpoint, and this is on my Steam API. And now the second one here, again, is a 200 OK. Clicking through some of these here, you'll see that eventually we will stumble upon the 404 endpoint here. And I can see immediately that this is hitting my games endpoint and it's searching for that Final Fantasy game that we were looking for. However, I can see here that immediately there is a typo in this URL. It's got games with double S instead of just single. So let's come into our application code here. We'll go to the search page and then we'll fix this URL here. So let's change that back. We'll save this and then we'll come back into our application and go to the search page here. Now let's type searching for Final Fantasy again. And you can see now that we have results returning successfully. Awesome. So what I want to do now is you've seen that we can gather information about the page load times, all of our web vitals, we can see logs, errors, and traces from our application. However, I want to add some additional context to all of the logs and events that we're pushing to Grafana Faro so that I have better indications about things such as the user journey. For example, I might want to push a log entry and an event that tells me when a user has performed a search and what the results of that search were. So let's dive into our code again. And after we've performed our search here, I want to add a custom log entry that is gonna be sent to Grafana Faro that tells me some additional context about that search. So we're gonna import a couple of things here. Let's import the Faro object as well as the log level from our Faro React package. And down here now, just after we've received our results for our search, we're gonna call the faro.api.pushlog function. We're gonna give it a string here that says search result for search term found response games. We're gonna change the level here from warn to info, because it's not actually a warning. And then we're gonna pass in some additional context here. We'll pass the search term, we'll pass the results, and we'll also pass the user ID. Now this expects to be a string. So what I'll do here is I'll change this response data length into a string, just using some string interpolation there. And then we'll save this file. What I also want to do is I want to push an event. 
So let's use the same faraway API, but this time we're going to use the push event function here. We're going to give it a name. We're going to pass in some of that additional context, and we're going to also specify what domain this event belongs to. And then finally, what I want to do is I also want to send a custom error to Grafana Faro whenever an error is encountered, perhaps in this search section again. So let's wrap this whole thing in a try catch block. We're going to catch an error. Let's just fix the format in here. And when we get this error here, what I want to do is I want to use the Faro API and we're going to push the error to Grafana Faro. The other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to do our set is loading to be false, just so the user isn't presented with a continuous loading spinner. What this is going to do now is when this URL is called and anything goes wrong, either within setting the games from the response or perhaps the URL goes incorrect or anything else happens here, we're going to push that error message specifically to Grafana Faro and then the user is not going to get that continuous loading spinner. So let's save this now and let's go back to our application. We'll go to our search panel here. And now if I type in, let's say for example, broken sword, and we can see the results here. Let's add some things to our favorites. And now let's search for example, Master Chief. And we can see the Master Chief collection has come up here. I wanna add that one to my favorites as well. And now let's dive back into our Grafana front-end observability dashboard here for our application. And what I want to do now is under our page performance section, I'm going to click on the search endpoint here. I'm going to expand this session for the user and I'm going to click on explore to come and have a look at the Loki logs for this particular session. I'm going to open up the builder here for our log and I'm going to change the operation here. I'm going to add a new label filter. Let's change this to be kind and I want to search for any events that might have happened for this particular user. Let's run the query here and we'll change the time span to be the last 30 minutes. And if we come down into our logs here, you'll see that we have all of the events that have been captured for this particular session. And you can see here, there's an event with a name of search Let's scroll down on the page a little bit here and you can see all of the information for this particular search event that I've just pushed from my code specifically. We can see the event data search term was master chief. And we can see the user ID, which is the user ID for my user within my application. Let's also come up here and change this kind to log and we'll be able to see the custom log entry that we sent as well. So here inside of our logs panel, you can see a message of search result for Master Chief found one game. We'll scroll down and we can see that additional context. There was one result. The search term was Master Chief. And again, we've got the user ID for our user there. And with that, we've successfully instrumented our React application using the Grafana Faro SDK and Grafana Frontend Observability in Grafana Cloud. Thanks for watching as we explored how to enhance your React app with Grafana Faro for a comprehensive front-end observability solution. If you want to dive deeper into Grafana Faro and explore more about front-end observability, make sure to check out our documentation. The link's in the description below. If you found this video helpful, please remember to give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more Grafana tutorials and insights. If you have any questions or feedback, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments below. So until next time, Take care and I'll see you in the next one.